<laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. It is Danielle Iwata here and I am so happy to have you here with me today. This is number two of 10 of my online ESL tips and techniques series to help you do the best job in your classroom as an online ESL teacher. This is all about error correction. It's one of the most important facets for a teacher to really master to be a good online ESL teacher. And when you think about errors or making mistakes, you think of something negative, something... <clears throat> I'm getting over a cold. <laughs> so my voice just like quit sometimes. <laughs> Sorry about that, bear with me here. We're gonna get through this. But when we think about errors, we think about something that we've done wrong or something bad. But I came across a quote, I wanted to share it with you. A person who makes few mistakes makes little progress. It's true. When you make a mistake or you make an error, it gives you a chance to recognize, correct, and do better. And that's huge for us in our online classrooms as teachers, for our learners. When we're talking about error correction with our students, it's a sensitive topic because I know that when you're teaching, it is a, such a special moment when your student clicks and they are speaking and, and conversing with you, and that's a huge achievement. The fact that you as a teacher can get your students to speak in the classroom, that's huge. However, for most of us, many of our students are Chinese speakers, so there are a couple of errors that they will consistently make. They might add a vowel to the end of a word, for example, instead of black, they will say black. -a. Gender pronouns don't exist. He and she in Chinese are the same thing, so they will get that confused a lot. Articles will be used incorrectly. So those things do exist. And as ESL teachers, our goal is to have fluent, competent, and accurate English speakers. And this is where error correction comes into play. What's more, parents expect it. Most of us are teaching children. Client that we need to answer to or that needs to be the most satisfied are the ones who are paying for it, who are the parents. Most Chinese adults have a basic knowledge of English. The reason they're paying us to teach their children is they want a native English speaker to be correcting their child so that they will be able to be a more accurate English speaker. If you don't error correct, you can risk a bad review. For many companies, there's an option for a negative feedback and one of the tags is lack of error correction. So this is a, something that can also definitely affect you as a teacher if you don't implement it in your classroom. Let's talk about some different techniques that you can use to error correct in your online classroom. I'm gonna show you in my personal classroom some real footage of my students and things that I do when I want to correct them and also some special circumstances or reminders that we want to keep in mind. So let's jump into some techniques. So number one is called elicitation. We are a parrot to the student. The student makes an error. You repeat the same thing the student said up until the error and pause. Let's suppose a student said, yesterday I go to the park. Hmm, yesterday I and pause, <laughs> that's huge. This will give the student a chance to, huh, wait a second. A lot of times they will self-correct, and if not, you can go ahead and help them out with the correct tense. Luck. What is luck? Good are bad things that happen to people by change. By? Change. Chance. Chance, very good. Method number two, echo repetition. As the name implies, you're echoing. You echo the whole thing the student said. When they hear it back to them, oh, they realize. If your student says, I have 12 years old. I have 12 years old? And again there, you can always put emphasis on the specific word that's wrong. I have 12 years old? Hmm. Method number three is a clarification request. You just make a questioning intonation, like, huh? I'm sorry? Excuse me? Hmm. Things like that. If a student said, I go to the store yesterday. Hmm. Hmm? What was that? 
that makes the student consciously analyze what they just said, reprocess, and hopefully autocorrect on their own. Number four, this was the topic of my first video, using TPR. So use your facial or body language to let them know, ah, oh, something's a little wrong with your answer. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Try again? Are you sure? That lets them know, okay, okay, let me just go back and reprocess what I just said and try to reformulate. Five, method number five is called recasting or reformulation. This is where you're not explicitly correcting what the student has said, you just recast it back to them in the correct way. This is good because it helps to keep the flow going without cutting into the lesson too much. And how can trash hurt the environment? What do you think? Um, um, the trash is not for our health and the, the environment are not clean either. Mm -hmm. Right. So trash can hurt our health. Yes. Okay. There has been debate that this form of technique might not be the most effective because some students might not really realize that they've made an error. Use your judgment depending on how the flow is going in your specific class if you want to use this recasting without interrupting the lesson. Number six, this goes hand in hand with TPR and this is mouthing. Your mouth <laughs> is one of your best props. That's one of the reasons why I wear a lot of strong lipstick in my online classroom. I have like shades that are just <laughs> in my little <laughs> lipstick drawer. They're just for online teaching because I would never actually step outside wearing that, I think, I think. <laughs> but it really helps put emphasis on my lips. So mouthing, it's a good non-vocal way of communicating to the student. Mm, something's off. Electricity, driving cars and induced tree, induced tree create greenhouse gases. A good reading. This word is industry. Industry. Duh, duh. Industry. <laughs> Very good. All right, you're doing awesome. Another letter. You use your fingers, point to your mouth, even go up to the camera and really emphasize the correct mouth, mouthage? Mouth formation. <laughs> the correct, you get what I'm saying, mouthing. <laughs> Number seven is using the or method. A lot of times my students, they get he and she confused. A student got it confused and for the girl, he said, he has blue eyes. It should have been she. So there I used the or method. I said, he has blue eyes? or she has blue eyes. I'm using your hand, he or she. They still don't get it. Having my hands open, I'll give them a hint. What animal has a trunk? <laughs> an elephant has a trunk. A elephant or an elephant. An elephant. Yes, an elephant has a trunk. The or method, giving them option A or option B. <laughs> a really fun one to bring in is to use your puppet. <laughs> and it gives you maybe a chance to get a drink. <sighs> You'd be surprised. Even for your older level students, it works well to have a, a puppet to model what is to be said or to correct the error. What is this? Hmm. Blind again. Okay. The glitch. The glitch. The glitch. Good job. What is a village? And the last one, number nine, for error correction is to use a whiteboard, a visual aid to help them to, ah, see. You can use your fingers and the whiteboard. For example, going back to my class this morning, we were doing the pronouns and they were struggling with it a little bit. So I had it drawn out that he is for boy and she is for girl. So there I wrote on my whiteboard, I had pulled it out, hmm. And then I just pointed. I held it up to the camera so they could see. And I just pointed. And she was able to, oh, 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 he has brown hair. And we're talking about a verb. We add 
S. S. He. He runs. He runs. Very good. And this can be used for prepositions, pronouns, for a variety of uh, situations. Having a visual aid to illustrate before, after, and just using your finger. You don't even have to say anything. It's like Googling the answer in class, but teacher's doing it for you. Those were some techniques that I have used for the past five years in my online ESL classroom, and I find to be very effective. So let's wrap up this video. I wanted to talk about some reminders to keep in mind and special circumstances that might be useful for you. Of course, you wanna keep in mind when you're correcting errors, the level of the student. Take a look at the PowerPoint and keep in mind the lesson objectives the characteristic, their personality of the student. If they are very shy, introverted, they're tending to get overwhelmed very easily, you might have to pick and choose very carefully. If they're an advanced level student, they're at that level for a reason. So you wanna keep pushing them harder and harder, and so you can be tougher on them for error correction. So keep that in mind. When you're making decisions on should I correct this or not, think about is this a new error or is it a repeated error? If it's a new error, that means they're learning. They're, they're trying something new here. Now, if this is a repeated error, something they do you know, consistently, you want to, I would go after that more because you don't want them to get in the habit of this bad habit of English. It's a lot about your judgment, but my point is, New errors aren't necessarily bad, it means they're learning. How do you do error corrections in a group class versus one-on-one? -on -one? For the companies that I teach with, say ABC, it's a group setting with four or up to six students, and with VIP Kid, it's more one-on-one. -on -one. For group classes, it's, for me, what works is to write down on a post-it. These days, I'm using my iPad. I would divide it into qu four quadrants. I would put each student's name, and I just put two columns with a check and a minus, and I would write in little scratch notes what they did good, what they did wrong. I can even put slide whatever to reference what example I'm talking about. And later on in the class itself, I'll take a look and remember, okay, you know, Annie made this mistake, don't let her make it again. Or for the feedback portion, that comes in really handy to have that there and to know for each of my students what they did good, what they did bad, and even on what slides. I am a little careful not to take too extensive notes because I don't wanna be looking down too much. And if I have to write something, you know, I'll show the pencil in the screen so I know I'm not texting or something unprofessional like that. For classes where it's individual students, it's a bit easier. VIP kid classes, I will actually write it into our chat box a word that they've made an error on or a mistake, I'll write it in the chat box, hit enter, and send it to the chat. So let's the student know, oh, that word I'm gonna work on. And also at the end of the class when feedback is being submitted, I can remember, oh, what word did they mispronounce? Oh, it's right there, just go look, okay, okay, okay. Another note I wanted to let you guys know about is that you don't want to overcorrect. Again, pick your battles, remember the lesson objectives, and try to stick with those. Get your error correction in the beginning and in the middle of class. I find some of my lovely students, they're getting tuckered out towards the end of the lesson. They're getting tired. So I want them to leave my class with the feeling, a good feeling. So I really get my error correction in the beginning, the middle, but towards the end of the class, usually it's a review, a wrap up of the lesson. So I try to really make them feel good about themselves, good about their class, good about their teacher, and leave on a really positive note. So, all right, everybody. I think that's all for this video for today. I hope it's been helpful for you. Error correction is a really key part of our online classroom. So I wanted to share with you what's worked for me. But now I'd love to hear what's worked for you in your online classrooms. What are your go-to strategies for error correction? What things work for you? If you have anything you'd like to share, please comment below. Be sure to subscribe. This is video two of 10 in my online ESL series. So if you enjoy videos like this, I think you'll enjoy what's coming next. <laughs> Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Good tea. Check this out. Toasted coconut. Oh. So good. I think it's by Big Low. <laughs> Do yourself a favor. Try it. Bye-bye. <laughs>